what will this director do? Cue cards. You, you're out, okay? They get rid of them, okay? Uh, that's how it goes, all right? They just say, you have to learn your line, so you can't be in my movie, okay? No matter how good you are. Well, it's the same thing with us, right? If you're selling, by the way, guys, I could care less what you do, okay? You can stand on the corner and juggle knives and just... <laughs> All right, so uh, if you're doing that and it's working and people are buying, do whatever the heck you want, okay? But if you're not selling, we're going to say, you got to learn your clothes. you got to do the demo the way we asked you to do because you're doing something weird and it's not working, okay? So it's really simple. So um, so after five, if you're still not selling, I'm going to say, sit down, do your clothes for me. If you can't do it, I'm going to say, you're off the base pay program until you learn your clothes, okay? Uh, now, that ha what happens when that happens is two people, there's two types of people. Some people quit. They go, Probably gonna make me do the demo the way I'm supposed to do it. Forget that. I'm not here. Not with me. Okay? So I'm not gonna keep paying you 17 in the quarter to do something we didn't ask you to do. Okay? Uh, and, uh, or the other thing is, you're like Jonathan or David or some of these people, and you sit down and memorize the clothes, and then you go out and you start selling homemakers, and yeah, making $73 in an hour. And you're like, oh, I love this job. It's great. Thank you for kicking my butt. I'm oh, happy with that one too. So, um, so that's how it works. Right? So those are the rules for base pay. You have to actually do the demonstration right. You have to attend a meeting once a week. You have to call in and tell us that you're doing your work. Sometimes people go, I have to go every day. 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 Every Okay, um, that's how it goes. All right. So, um, by the way, there are reps like that. Uh, Grace is gone now. She's over there, though. <coughs> like Grace, you guys met Grace. Uh, Grace doesn't come to our meetings. Now I'm going to give you a positive example. Of this uh, she doesn't come to our meetings. She sells a lot of cutco, uh, but she's got all kinds of stuff going on in her life and things that are happening. She's like, look, she's like, I'm already at ten thousand dollars in sales. Uh, I know what I'm doing. Uh, I can't, you know. Uh, she comes in. I'll give her help. I talk to her. She picks up rope with her once in a while. Uh, but um, she just doesn't. She's not a part of the office in that matter. And that's fine. Okay. We, she comes in every like two, three weeks. Drops a whole bunch of orders and then disappears for two, three weeks. Okay. And so, uh, so that's fine for her because she knows what she's doing. But she doesn't get base pay for any appointment. She doesn't want base pay. But, but she's not a part of our office in that in that matter. Okay. So again, two separate pay programs. Okay. So if you want to get paid on incentive, what do you have to do? Okay, company doesn't know. Company doesn't know if my office could be closed right now. I could be home. Company doesn't know what happens. As long as I send the borders, they're like, all right, I think whatever. Okay, what are you doing? Okay, so, so that's how it goes. But for base pay, you just gotta follow the rules. All right. Anybody look at these rules and go, man, they're strict. Gotta send a meeting once a week. Gotta actually have to do the demo the way I'm supposed to. Gotta call a whole phone call. I gotta press nine digits. <laughs> okay, so uh, so it's pretty simple. All right. So those are base pay requirements. I'm done talking about base pay. Let's talk about the excitement. All right. So. Um, Base pay. Base pay is there. It's, it's happy. I like base pay. Uh, I'm happy we have it as a company. Uh, but incentive, I will tell you, is where the real money is made here in our company. Okay? And, um, and that's how it goes. And so let me go through the different levels and uh, of what you uh, of your uh, your different promotion levels and all that kind of stuff. Uh, incentive is where you get the resume experience. It's where you learn. It's where you feel good. You get you get the excitement level of making a sale, uh, which you don't really get anywhere else. And uh, just it's just also where you get the good money. So so as you guys know, you start up at 10%. You're at 10% until so you reach $1,000 in career sales. Okay? Now, from zero to 1,000, uh, you are called a trainee. That's your title. Trainees. Anybody like their title? No. Uh, okay. no that's your title. All right? We can call you rookie, too. Call you rookie. Okay? So, uh, so rookies are trainees. When you hit 1000 bucks, when you stop being a rookie, you get your certificate of training. It says this certificate of training is awarded to, uh, this is Williams, William, for successfully completing Vector Marketing Corporation Sales Training Seminar. Through classroom and field training, the following skills have been developed. Sales presentation, closing the sale, lead development, telephone appointment setting, time management, and $1,000 in personal sales. This seminar has been widely recognized and universally applicable for communicating with today's consumer. Completion requires dedication, a strong willingness to learn, and a desire to succeed. Congratulations on completion of the program, uh, and that's something that you have for yourself and for your portfolio. So, um, is that something good? Yeah. yeah, okay. Sales skills are needed in any job, okay? Uh, my friend Heather was a, a genetic engineer, okay? She spins test tubes around and looks at stuff. All right, so uh, that's what she does. Uh, every five, six months, she gives me a call. She's like, hey, I need some help. I'm like, what do you need? She's like, can you teach me some of this sales stuff? I'm like, why? Well, okay, I'm like, you're a genetic engineer. She's like, ah. She's like, I got to go get money from the government. I got to present some results here, okay? And so she has to get research and funding for her, her experiments, okay? So, you know, sales skills are, are needed in any, any field, okay? You have to... Not be able to sell. All right. So, so anyway, so 10%. So when you get to a uh, thousand bucks, you're no longer a uh, a trainee, okay? And you get your first pin, okay? You get the uh, you get the sales rep, sell rep. You're officially a sales rep, okay? So and you move up to 15%, which is kind of cool. Uh, and you're making some at least better money, okay? By the way, the pin 
things are really important. Uh, people wear, I just wear the Q-Staff pin. I don't wear my district manager pin because you don't know what this thing means. Uh, but, uh, uh, but the pins, I always wear the pins all the time, right? Because people, it's a, you know, people ask questions, right? I'm like, oh, what's that pin? You know, I'm a senior advisor with the company. Okay, so uh, so people just love that kind of stuff, right? You see someone with a pin, you always want to know, well, what's that about? Okay, so, uh, so you always wear your pins. Now, also we have these big events. I showed some of you guys in the video. Uh, people speak to you differently based upon what kind of pin you're wearing. Okay, now we're not like pin snobs, like. <laughs> okay, you know, uh, it's like the blue pin snob. Okay, but uh, it's not like that. Uh, but uh, we just we just know that you know if somebody has the no pin or they have like the first pin, we know they're new. Okay, and with the new people, new people, everybody hangs out based on their pin level. Because new people, they're new, and they don't know anybody, so they're just kind of like hang out with like, who you look confused, who you look confused, so hang out with confused people, okay? And so uh, they kind of hang out together, right? And uh, then we go over to these people, we go, hey, how's it going, okay? How's it going with the rope? Oh, yeah, I'm great. You cut the food, the rope, leather, everything's good, yeah? How many cut the time you cut your finger? Oh, it's funny, so cool, all right, one, two, nice shot. All right, so, uh, so that's what we talk about to the newbies, okay? So we're newbies. But at least when you're at this level, you're still a newbie, but at least you have a pin. You're like, hey, I'm new, but I sold a little bit. All right, so it's kind of cool. All right, so uh, now when you um, when you get to 3,000, <coughs> you get your first pin with some color in it. You get the white pin, okay? So and you go up to 20%. Now, if you're not writing this down because you wrote down yesterday, that's fine. But here's what I do want you to write down: is 3,000 equals the safety zone. You want to get to 3,000 as fast as possible, preferably in your fast start, in your first 10 days. Okay. The reason why you want to do it in your first 10 days is two reasons. Number one, uh, you you're at level. You're at this level. You're at the completion set level in your fast start, which means that you get the ice cream scoop, which you want to have, so you can show it to um, you can show people that's something they get for free with some of the sets. Fisherman solution is really cool. You get Calvin Klein, uh, and then you get the butcher knife, uh, the butcher knife, the carving knife, the carving fork, and the slicer. The the, the thing that completes your homemaker for free. And so uh, so you really want to get that for free in your first ten days, so that way you have those for the rest of your career. And you don't have to buy them or something else later on, or use cut bucks and, and try to. Achieve Right, so um, so you really want to get that so you have the complete homemaker at the very minimal level. Okay, and it's really not that hard. It's, you know, it's three hundred dollars a day uh, for ten days, or you know, uh, three grand days, or you know, three three big days, you're fine. Okay, so uh, and not to mention you're at twenty percent. When you're at twenty percent, you know, you know, you have to try this stuff to get base pay. I mean, you sell a, a, a chef knife for a hundred bucks, twenty percent, you make it twenty dollars. Okay, so you're beating your base pay with one that one night. Uh, it's really not that hard to uh, you know, just base pay becomes irrelevant. Okay? So once the people get to the uh, to the white pin level, they're like, hmm, I'm making good money. Okay, And uh, the white pins, we call them, like they, they're really questioning now. Because now they really, they're really like, okay, I get it now. I understand. Uh, if I sell, I'm going to make a lot more money. I'm at 20%. They start doing their math on like, a homemaker sales, like almost $200. They're like, oh, this is pretty good. Uh, so now these people at the meetings, they just walk around and ask people. They see people with bigger pins. They just ask questions. They're like, you know, kind of a learner. So like, hey, help me with my closing ratio. What do you do? Hey, what do you do? Okay, like you see all the white pins just kind of walking around asking questions because uh, they want to get to the next level. All right, so uh, so you're at 20% until you reach $6,000 in sales. And when you get to 6000 you go up to 25%, you know, which is pretty cool. And uh, 6000 uh, you, you turn the white pin in because you don't want people talking about your white pin anymore. Uh, and you get the red pin, right? You become an advisor. Now, the red pin people, um, they get to they work on a special program, which is called a service phone program, whereas there are a lot of people that have Cutco that don't, have a rep anymore. Like they've had it like got it like ten years ago and their rep doesn't work anymore. So um, so like or, well, I'll show you the thing copy later. So we call these people up and we teach our we teach people to be service callers, right? And they get a sharpener and whatnot. <laughs> and they call people like let's say they have like David for example, like let's say he has uh, he has a couple demos in Long Island today. So uh, so let's say he had a demo at like at twelve and then he had his next one wasn't until like four. Right? So what he would do is he would get the service call these in that area, he'd call them up and say, Hi, my name's David, uh, you know, I'm Miss Jones, my name's David from the Cutlery Service Department. Uh, all in because you've had your cut right for six years, which means you do a first service call. Uh, by the way, it's a totally free service. All I do is come over, I touch up your eyes. It takes about 10, 15 minutes. Uh, but it's something you pay for originally when you bought the product, and it adds a lot of light to your product. Would you like, would you like the service call? Okay, and you call a bunch of people, and some people say yes, some people say no. And then we go over and we do it. He takes out the sharpener, he sharpens them, and then he takes his blue book and he puts it on the table. Guess what they do as he sharpens the knives? Okay, and they have all this new stuff. Like every year we come up with some new stuff. Okay, so like when I was a rep, we didn't have flatware. Uh, we didn't have ice cream scoops. We, we sold knives. Okay, we sold all this extra stuff. Uh, we didn't have a